A new crisis in the southern Philippines, a conflict with Malaysia over an area called Sabah. It's a dispute with a long history, but recently, without any warning, Filipino gunmen landed there to challenge Malaysian rule. They say this land belongs to the Sultan of Sulu, who lives in the Philippines. It may all sound a bit bizarre at first, but dozens have been killed and hundreds displaced. The long-term implications here could be severe for the region. At stake is a peace agreement more than 15 years in the making between the Philippine government and the largest Islamic insurgent group in Mindanao. The mediator of the peace process, Malaysia. Its Muslim-dominated government has been using its influence with the Islamic fighters of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front to bring the parties together. But now this man, Nur Miswari, a founder of the separatist movement in Mindanao is accused of indirectly sabotaging a final deal. His group, the Moro National Liberation Front, has been sidelined in the deal. Miswari alleges the Malaysians are using the deal for their own purposes. He's under investigation for conspiracy to jeopardize the peace process in Mindanao. It's in places like this where the resistance against what they call Philippine colonialism was nursed. Muslim ghettos, where fighters would hide with sympathizers and in turn bring soldiers chasing down the alleyways, hungry for revenge. Every family speaks of those years with an overriding sense of loss. And today, when we caught up with Noor Miswari in his home in Mindanao, we found a man who's clearly not happy with the current state of affairs. Chairman Noor, you are the original Muslim rebel in the Philippines, mm -hmm. in modern times. Although you come from a family of generations of Muslim warriors. Looking back at the 45 years since you formed the Muslim resistance in the Philippines, what can you say has been achieved? Well, I think uh, modesty aside, we have achieved something tremendous in our quest for peace in our homeland, as well as, of course, in enhancing uh, the freedom of our people. But you had to fight for it using violence. We had to fight for it, and in fact, we have lost hundreds of thousands of lives just to be able to uh, reach this point. There are so many um, tribes, ethno-linguistic groups, as the scientists That's call right. them. Um, doesn't that mean that that unity is really a dream? It's, it's not real. Is there really a sense of unity amongst Moros? Aren't you still fighting amongst each other? The MNLF, your group? and your rival group, the MILF, and the other Al-Qaeda-linked group, Abu Sayyaf. Well, you know, the problem uh, is that uh, our homeland is so rich, you know, not only in terms of history, but in terms of its resources. So that's why so many people, people want to occupy this land and they applied what they called the classical policy of, of uh, divide and rule so that our people could not unite and fight as one nation to uh, you know, roll back all of these uh, foreign uh, aggressors. Uh, the moment, for instance, apart from the Philippines, the most serious uh, uh, interference we are receiving is from uh, the side of the Malaysian government because they are colonizing our homeland uh, name as North Borneo or better still Sabah and Sarawak. But hang on a minute, Malaysia is a neighboring Muslim majority country. In the past, your organization has received support from them. Why now are you suspecting interference? Uh, because uh, Malaysia 
has come to understand that I don't like to compromise every square inch of our people's sacred land. Because, you know, in the beginning they thought that uh, by helping us, that uh, one thing, uh, we could save them from the tentacles of Marcos and his dictatorship. Because Marcos wanted to grab The late Sabah. Philippine dictator in the 70s. That is right. Mm. So later on, when uh, Marcos was, uh, uh, was finally put aside, then they began to suspect our intention. They used to say, if we give you arms, how do we know that you will not turn the arms against us? Things like that, things like that. But we said, no, 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 we are not uh, traitors. We cannot betray you. We cannot betray the hands that feed us. So, but they don't believe in that. Uh, so now they get entangled in our problem. So you, your organization benefited with money, with arms, with training? Not so much with money, no. But uh, of course I can tell you, I cannot deny the fact that we have received some, uh, you know, obsolete weapons, carbine and like that, just so we could, uh, you know, defend ourselves from the depredation of the government in Mindanao. Training? Yeah, of course training. We, have, we had undergone some training like that. But uh, because if you, were, if you would not be trained, they said that you might, uh, you know, fall into the hands of the uh, well-trained Philippine armed forces. So, do you know if the MILF got more training from the Malaysians after well, MILF they split? were trained with the MNLF. They were That's MNLF true, but after, after the split? Yeah. After the now, split? Now, I don't know, but uh, I will not be surprised if they are also doing this. But I think they are getting a lot of money instead. Money and, uh, I don't know, even uh, armaments, they said. You see, they, they had received good quality armaments. Uh, which they use against the Philippine armed forces. Uh, but I don't know the source, whether it's Malaysia or what. But anyway, they have uh, uh, received these armaments, and uh, we can only speculate. So, given the recent situation in which the self declared royal army of the Sultanate of Sulu went to Sabah and said that they were claiming the land there. We are looking at a situation, you say, just to clarify, where the Malaysians who once helped the resistance in the Philippines is now attacking them. So you see, uh, I was in fact with, uh, at the residence of the, uh, of the Sultan, Sultan Jamaru III, just a few days before I came here. And when I went to Davao via Manila, I passed by. He's an old friend of mine. You see, I cannot say that I am taking side with him, but I sympathize with him. Uh, nor can I say that I am against the Malaysians. I am uh, for peace, and I want my people not to be disturbed at all. I don't like, uh, I have even warned my brother, uh, Prime Minister Najib, I said, please don't touch our people, don't persecute them. Whatever happens, I said in Lahad Datu, uh, please don't implicate our people. I don't like that to happen because they have no business. They have no, they are innocent, they have them nothing to do with that whatsoever. If we go to war against Sabah, who will be caught in the crossfire? It's going to be our own people, our own mothers, our own parents, etc., etc. We don't. That's why we don't like war here in Mindanao and in every part of Mind of our homeland, as well as in uh, in Sabah. Dozens are already dead, though. I have told. Uh, I have is issued a statement through the media, through the uh, tri media, on several occasions. You say, Chairman Noor, that you are for peace, but you organized the Moro National Liberation Front to conduct an armed struggle for your cause of a Muslim homeland. You are ready to sacrifice lives, aren't you? Are you still ready to do that? Uh, well, of course, until we can uh, restore complete and permanent peace to our homeland, it's impossible to stop this process because the moment we do that, let us say we disarm ourselves 
uh, there is no guarantee that Philippine government will not mount another, uh, uh, you know, another uh, program of liquidation of decimation of our uh, of our uh, population in, uh, in in Mindanao. But what is it that you want to achieve? What does a Muslim homeland, according to Nur Miswari, look like? Does it include people of all tribes and religions, or is it only for Muslims? Well, this uh, Bangsamoro homeland, demographically, uh, is perceived by many people as embalming only the about 12 million Muslims. But uh, actually, the Highlander communities, uh, 11 million altogether, have uh, come up with a covenant with us, uh, you know, reasserting their membership in this Bangsamoro nation, so-called. So, they, because we are all indigenous peoples, entitled to the UN uh, General Assembly Resolution of September 13, uh, 2007. So they want to cling together with us so we can enjoy that right from the United Nations. But at the same time, I'd like to tell you that we are now in, uh, happily in alliance with our Christian brothers from all parts of the world, including uh, our brothers from the Visayas and Luzon and so forth. Can I ask you how you see yourself? Are you first a Muslim? Or are you first Taosug, your tribe? Are you first from the Miswari clan? Are you first a Filipino? Well, I am a Muslim first and foremost because uh, that's what I am, you see, since uh, my childhood. Uh, I have always identified myself as a Muslim. Uh, I was born a Muslim and I will die a Muslim. Internationally, when people look at this corner of the world, they think about terrorism. Your organization, MNLF, recently began fighting against a terrorism-linked group, the Abu Sayyaf group. Why? Because many people had been complaining to us. They came, they used to come and visit me, especially those who had been victims of the Abu Sayyaf depredation. You see them as terrorists? You see them as terrorists? Yes, of course they are, because they are kidnapping people for ransom. And this is uh, forbidden by God, forbidden by Islam, forbidden by the law of mankind and like that. But it's a demonstration of the armed power that the MNLF still has. Uh, you intend to use that in the future how? Well, you see, uh, uh, some of them have played to, uh, they have played to Basilan, and they are, I understand, under the protection of some powerful people. Some have played, Who? I cannot name now, you see, uh, but uh, there are Who's some. More power Who is powerful in Basilan? Some uh, powerful people in Basilan, they say. We're talking about warlords, warlords, politicians, oh, well, leaders of uh, the, tribes the, uh, or clans. Informant, the oh. informant told me that they are powerful people without spelling out exactly with what kind of people are they. Why is it so difficult for the authorities to stop the kidnapping? Why is it so difficult for the Muslim community itself to stop this kind of uh, behavior. It's brought ignominy, notoriety because, to your community. Because, you know, uh, that's a very good question. I myself, I used to ask this, uh, you know, raise this question, why is it difficult for them when in fact they have the yeah, huge amount of money for intelligence purposes to eavesdrop on their activities and their comms and their movement and all that. But MNLF, it took them only three days. The uh, Abu Sayyaf is literally done away with. We have a new situation now in Mindanao where it looks as if a Bangsamoro agreement with the government of the Philippines is about to be agreed with a rival group to yours. 
the Moro Islamic Liberation Front uh -huh. splintered off from your group mm -hmm. in the 80s. Are they your rivals? Are you going to support this agreement? Well, you know, in the first place, we cannot support this because it will be counterproductive on our part. Because this uh, MILF was organized uh, as a spoiler to derail our struggle. You but see? wouldn't they argue that the MNLF is the spoiler? The if MILF. It, the MNLF, your organization, could be the spoiler if you do not support the agreement. Couldn't they say that? No, it's not that. Because, you know, I have signed agreement, peace treaty agreements as early as 1976 and then followed by 1987 peace agreement with Cory, and then with Ramos in 1996. We, these are peace treaty agreements that must be implemented first. Anyone that will come up with a new agreement to put that aside is the spoiler. I, I remember back in the 80s, the international Muslim community under yeah. the auspices of the OIC tried to bring your groups together so that the Muslim community in the Philippines could speak with one voice. It didn't work then. Why couldn't it work now? It's been, what, we 30 can, years? We cannot do that much do we like it because Malaysia will not allow them to do that because these are uh, instruments of Malaysian colonialism, the MILF. It was organized by them. You became this figure for Muslim resistance, a great figure that people across Mindanao look to. You became governor of an autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao, having fought for years, sending people to their deaths. I'm sure you've killed people yourself, probably. Mm-hmm, yeah. Well, uh... Is it? Have you? Go ahead, please. Sorry. Have you yourself killed someone for no, your no, cause? No, 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 not in my life. Uh, even, uh, uh, even an aunt, I, I, I cannot afford to kill. But you've ordered uh, people to kill. No, it's not. I never ordered anyone. I, I just ordered them defend yourself in, in the name of our universal right of self-defense. In the 70s, there was a terrible war of attrition here. Many human rights violations and abuses, lives lost. Mm -hmm. This region is still the least developed region in the whole of the Philippines. Was it really all worth it to you? Was it worth that suffering? Certainly it was. Uh, because without that, uh, we would have uh, remained in oblivion. Uh, Philippine government, knowing as we do that a colonial government in relation to us would never care about our fate here. They, in fact, they wanted to obliterate us according to our understanding because they wanted to perpetuate the colonial rule in our homeland. But uh, at any rate, I'm beginning to understand now that Philippine government is slowly uh, understanding uh, the uh, dilemma it faces because it cannot defeat us anymore by force of arms. So only when we come together uh, across the negotiating table in a peaceful way that there could be a resolution to this problem. Will you do that? I am willing, more than willing, to uh, resolve this problem peacefully with them. That's why uh, when the OIC came, uh, sent their people here and Indonesia, the ambassador of Indonesia was sent here to persuade me to leave the ban on peace talks with the Philippine government after the March 1, 2 and 3 in Bandung last year because our leaders met here 1,500 of them, including the commanders mostly. They said no more peace talks. They always, we always end up being outwitted and being uh, cheated by them. I said uh, to the ambassador, of course, I, will be, I might be repudiated by my leaders, but I don't care, provided that uh, we can resume the peace talks. Uh, I'm not defying the leaders, the decision of the leaders, but I want to show that to, to them that there is no wisdom in not going back to the negotiating table. So I'm willing 
to go back because the OIC told me in, in Cairo during the meeting of the Islamic head of his stage uh, that uh, they want to resume the talks in Jakarta very soon, here, this month. So you will go and have talks under the aegis of the OIC with the Philippine government, if the Philippine government is willing. What about the MILF? MILF is a different entity because they have chosen to abandon the path of peace through us, through the MNLF, and they won't, because they, they succumb to the entities of Malaysia. It's Malaysia that is uh, pulling the string behind them. I'm sorry to say this. I hate to, you know, uh, reveal this or expose this, but uh, that's the truth of the matter. Put aside Malaysia, I think we can uh, immediately uh, solve this problem with the Philippine government. But Nur Maswari, this is a situation where, ironically, you are describing your ability to negotiate with the traditional enemies uh, in, of the Christian North, but you're not able to negotiate with your Muslim brothers in the South. Yes, it's because uh, uh, we are very apprehensive of the role of Malaysia, because Malaysia does not want to budge an inch from our land, our sacred land, Sabah and Sarawak. So that's the issue? That's the that's key the issue? That's the biggest issue behind all of this because they are earning a lot of money from here, from this, you see? You think this MILF deal was put together specifically to sell out Sabah? Exactly, exactly. They have an agreement on this. I know, I know, because uh, Malaysia has been sending uh, a number of high-level delegations to ask them, are you going to uh, claim ownership of Sabah? Etc. Well, Ajimura and company said, no, no, we have nothing to do with Sabah and Malaysia. We are very far from the, that belongs to the Taosog, solely to the Taosog. So it's useless for the Malaysian to be continuing to deal with the uh, Sabah, uh, with the MILF. Its their interest is to preserve their stay in Sabah and Sarawak. So Looking the best thing is for them to deal with us, the MNLF, particularly with Nur Miswari, and perhaps to a certain extent with the Sultanate. Looking at it for, as an outsider, I don't share your rich history, but I don't think that Malaysia will ever let go of Sabah. What is it that you really want? Well, you know, it's like this. I have stood before hundreds of thousands of people. The last time, uh, it was 1.5 million people, MNLF members like that. You see, I asked them, let's go to the negotiating table, let's go to the International Court of Justice, resolve this in a brotherly way, get all the best juries in the world with the money from Sabah. We will fit our local la lawyers provided they, are, they know something about the law of evidence. If you can prove before the high courts, before the world court, that Sabah and Sarawak belongs to habit, we'll forget all about it. But if it can be proven that it's ours, by, by all means, you must gracefully withdraw from there. Otherwise, you might be inviting some crisis in the end. How would you like to be remembered? What is your legacy, do you feel? I think the most precious thing to me is first the survival of my people under the ages of a free uh, political, social, culture and freedom. Uh, you see, uh, what I want is uh, ultimately the people will be freed from the tentacles of Philippine and Malaysian colonialism uh, so that uh, they can put up their own uh, independent uh, sovereign state, a resuscitation of the olden days when they were the most powerful country in this part of the world. So now uh, my uh, wish is to wrap up. I wish that my people become a free people, a free nation, as in the past. Thank you very much, Chairman Nur Miswari, for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you so much. Thank you.